Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris. In this video, I'll be talking again about seismic waves. In a previous video, I talked about a simple seismic situation which included one geophone and one source. What I described was the zero offset case, sort of, where the geophone picked up reflected waves directly underneath our seismic source. This allowed us to generate a zero offset geological section in time. In this video, I'm going to show the results of using multiple geophones at different offsets to record the reflected seismic waves. Here we go! This is my third video focused on seismic acquisition. In my previous videos, I only looked at a single impulsive seismic source for simplicity. To start off, we look again at a single impulsive source and multiple flat reflective layers. As you can see, if we consider a large subset of waves and rays at the same time, we end up with an interestingly complex situation to decipher. For simplicity, we look at the responses received at the geophones from a two-layer system without first arrivals. First we look at the first layer and the responses at the geophones. The responses are represented by blinking at the geophones and wavelets recorded in time. And second, the reflections off the second layer and the responses at each geophone. Now, if we combine both sets of reflections from the first and second layer, we end up with something very interesting. The reflections appear as hyperbolas, which is an odd representation of the subsurface. What we want to do is bend the hyperbolas, flattening the reflections, resulting in good time representations of the subsurface. Through the magic of arm waving and manipulations of the equation of the hyperbola, we end up with something called the normal move out equation, where geophone offsets total travel times and root mean square velocities can be used to flatten out our seismic hyperbolas. Now, there are actually a few more processing steps between receiving a reflected signal and normal move-out corrections. I'll eventually cover a basic seismic processing flow, but till then, here are a few esoteric obsolete processing steps. Chekhov's Gun Suppression Temporal Paradox Reduction seems to come back at random in opportune times. Red herring attenuation. Eh, this was a lucky catch. Romantic block removal. Uh, we prefer logic and Vulcans too. MacGuffin detection. And removal via temporal paradox reduction. And finally, a full dose of Chekhov's gun suppression. After CDP sorting and velocity analysis, subject of future videos, you can flatten the hyperbolas and arrive at a time representation of the subsurface. To recap, using a seismic source and multiple geophones placed on the surface of the Earth, we are able to record reflected waves from different layers in the subsurface. When the layering in the subsurface is flat, the recording of the geophones will appear as hyperbolas. Using geophone offset information and rock velocities, the hyperbolas can be flattened out, creating a geological section in time, two-way travel time. But what happens if the layering of the Earth is tilted or even folded? More videos to come. If you liked my video, please give me a big thumbs up Subscribe to my channel, add me to your LinkedIn, or even better, share my videos through your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris. Keep rocking.